Yeah man, this is Ras India and you're watching Belizean Legends. This is Belizean Legends and I am Bilal Morris. Today we will be speaking with one of the children of the legendary Belizean artist brother David Obi. The son of brother David Obi, a rising Belizean reggae artist by the name of Ras Indio. Yes. Right here in the studios of Belizean Legends. Mm -hmm. Bringing you the Belizean Legends audience, audience, this awesome Belizean artist who has captured the imagination of many in the world beat arena. Ras Indio has been performing for the last, would say, 10 years. He's been on the circuit, just coming into the United States, going abroad in Europe, and making some classic performances. Ras Indio, my brother, I want to welcome you to the studios of Belizean Legends. Greetings. Blessed love, always a pleasure, you know, and especially to be here on the Legends of Belize show, you know, musical legends. Yes, my brother, um, I want to go straight into your beginnings, how it all began for you as a musical artist coming out of Belize. Um, you know, tell our, 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 our viewers what is it that got you started in becoming an artist a musical artist for that matter what is it that made you took that journey that step into that direction in your life well i'll i'll arrows point to my father you know initially so we have a big up brother david again brother david obi yes um without his inspiration musically I wouldn't have, I don't know if I would have gotten involved with music. I could have possibly been a basketball player, you know, because that was my next very, very much passion. I, you know, that's one thing I used to love doing, is playing basketball. But my father inspired me from the age of one, growing up right here in California. You know, um, he had a band that he worked with by the name of Unity. All right, and this is in the 80s um, that I really learned being around music and what it does for your soul, you know, like I grew up ages four to seven to like about eight and that was when I grew up with the Unity Band rehearsing in the back room of the house. So, you know, it was a thing where every evening when I never have nothing to do that in the back room I did they listen to the band or the bounce round by the keyboard player I used to actually fall asleep many times under the stand of the keyboard player all right not knowing that 15 years 16 years later I would have become the official keyboard player for the band tribal vibes you know which I'm a pop band throughout the 90s so again I think that's something where the part of my destiny. You know? Yes, brother. You know when you talk about the Unity Band, I keep forgetting <laughs> that you actually live some of your lives, some of your life right here in Los Angeles, right? Yes. yes, um, yes. I growing up my young age, like I said, between one to like nine, before I even touch foot uh, on Belizean soil. But the soon, the minute I touch a Belizean soil, I want to know where my root really was, you know? Yes, <laughs> yes. So you were, you were born here, uh, uh, Ras Indio? Yes. Yes, let me help you us need to know that, you know, you see a lot of these Belizeans, artists, footballers, sports athletes, and a lot of people don't realize that a lot of Belizeans were actually born here but later on repatriated home. And I know your father was one that repatriated home. I remember yeah. the year that he repatriated home. And yeah. it, when he went home, he took his children with him. Yes, he and said, you, you did. Yeah. What yeah. yeah. oh, he said? He said, you're going home. He said, we're going home now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, as a youth living in uh, America at the time, it was like, you know, it was a drastic change, you know? But um, growing on and, and growing up into what I developed now mentally, I, I realized that it was the best move for us at that time, you know, definitely. And my mother, Beulah Kushner, 
have to big her up too. Yes, very much. She was part of the reason why I also, because she went home too. So, you know, a lot of Belizeans come to America and we get stuck and never go home. So I always encourage Belizeans. Remember, Belize is a beautiful place. We have a lot of tourists now <laughs> where they go and buy out Belize, you know, not only visit it. So we have to make sure we have a piece of Belize for our children's sake. And that's always one of the messages I push throughout the music. You know, my brother, as you talk, you come from two very legendary Belizean parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mother, Bula Hushna, was an activist. Yes. An astute activist right here in the Los Angeles Belizean community. Remember her very well. Yes. yes. And your father, of course, have always been a, not only a musician and an artist, but also a very you know, astute artist in this Los Angeles Belizean community. So you are home. When you come here, you are home. Yes. In this Los Angeles Belizean community. And, and I don't know that, you know? Yes, man. You embrace, and I see how they embrace you. Yes. But Russ, in your we 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 have seen your work. Um, you have emerged out of that little, out of the nest mm -hmm. of your of your father, you know, to yeah, you know, and merge your own your own musical life out of Belize back into the U.S. and across the world. Talk about how that all began for you. Yeah, well, um, you know, being home in Belize, you know, as we really grow up. Of course, I love playing the keyboards, but at the time, the time come now where you say, you know, you want to step out too and you know, express myself also. And that actually, I could go back a little further to when I um, made first stage appearances in Belmopan, courtesy of my aunt, uh, June Hushna. She used to have variety shows and pageants. And the, the, the biggest one was when she invited me to not serenade, but rapping aid to the girl she had in a Miss Belmont Pan pageant. And when I, when I did that, it's because I singled each and every person and, you know, made rhymes according to their names. And so that kind of was the first real appearance I made to my, my, my Belmont Pan public. And, um, and after that is when I say Rasindio really began to dabble in the, in the singing part of this, of, of, my, of my musical journey. You know, because I, mean, I always play music, I've always played music. I could play any percussional instrument. I play the drums, and of course, we know we play the keyboards, you know? But singing has been in the back, you know? And again, it's just a, a, a one thing where everybody do, because all of we have words, and some of us turn out to be poets, and some of us, but me, I always wanted to sing. So when I did, ended up writing my first song, you know, and Ina Dangriga there with my father and Nikuma. Let's big up Nikuma. Nikuma, yes, brother. yes, my brother. Yeah, right? You know, another yeah. great musician, very much, and artist. Um, he just, he just, he just not push up himself as much as I think I have. He, he, there right now the back just like this, you know. He really, Humble Virgin, yes, yeah. Right. But um, yeah. I pulled him out on the song Plant the Can. So if you see the video on YouTube, just type Ras in there, Plant the Can, you'll see my brother Nikuma. But um, you know, when I step out there and did the first song, um, Mother Nature's Best Kept Secret. That was the song that I recorded in Dan Grigger. And that was the first time I realized, yes, I'm going to put out an album. And that album was called Free Up Me Nation, you know? And then, that then the thing started. Like, I had no control over it, you know? Um, it just kind of just chose me, and I just kind of de delivered right back what I feel like I was chosen to do, you know, because I couldn't be keep playing the keyboards, but you just feel like I had things to say also. And uh, when I write now and people hear my song, they say, wow, you, it's like you got a lot for say for true. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there was a lot built up in me. And again, not to keep going so long, but my father introduced me to a lot of music as a youth. Um, all the, the great Burning Spear and Peter Tosh and Bob Marley. And, so all that build up in me, it's a lot of words, you know? <laughs> a lot of words I intake as a youth through music. So it had to find a way to yeah, come yeah. back out, you know? Very much, very much, brother. Yeah. Excellent um, background there, the journey you took us through there was really, really, because <laughs> I, I share some of it with you people because I, re I think I remember you from your you were a kid. Yeah, the run around yeah, last and that it shows. You know, things. knowing your father and what you learn, you talk about your musical background that you pick up. Now people do not realize when they see you, you know, that 
you are actually a musical artist. You can yeah. play instruments, yes. right? Yes, I wish you play keyboard, you play drums. Yes, and a lot of know? artists of today are not realizing how important that is to be yes. an artist that knows the music because then that's how you know where they do. You know exactly. I mean? you exactly. Be, um, singers and sing, 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 but if you don't know what note you're going to sing to, and that goes back to me, well, the, one of the questions I wanted to share with you, ask you, Rasinjo, because today you see a lot of these young hip hop musical artists today, they can't play. And I was very annoyed that Belize would have had the same kind of problem, but when I went in there, I saw a lot of young Belizean music artists, musicians that are playing. They're yes. playing bass, keyboard, drums. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, we thought that it left with a certain genre of Belizean, a certain group like the Michael Hyde and the Junior Crawfords and so on, you could talk about bass players and drummers, but no, it continued. Yeah. They're right there, yeah. but you have to, it doesn't appear that they're there. You see also where hip hop and Jamaican style, uh, dance hall and so on has influenced the Belizean uh, music scene. Heavy. Very, very heavily. Heavy, heavy. And in terms now, you Trinidad, say, well, Trinidad. exactly. And the soccer, we were gonna very, say. very much. You have, you are not affected by that because no, no, no. you came up under a sort of a tutelage legend of your father yes. that made you learn how to play an instrument. All of you, Nkrumah, and all of you. Yes, and so when we sit down, like I have a lot of interest in still sitting down and producing an album that I personally played every instrument. I have many songs where I have done such, like we have the Jobless Us acoustic remix and we have the Demo Fraud remix. No, it wasn't recorded all at the same time, but I sat and I played the percussion, I played the battle jingle, I played the shaka, I played the tambourine, I played each and every instrument laying it by tracks yeah. as the modern way of recording is today, you know? Yes, yes. And so when we finished that project and, and the reason why I did that is because I want to give a shout out to the guitar player of that song. It's the Demofraud acoustic remix, okay? I've done, I've done Demofraud four different times. Why? Because I believe Demofraud is one of my most powerful words ever inspired divinely, of course. See, because it's the words that will last forever. So I did it the regular way and then I brought it back one time and I did it in a hip hop way to reach that audience, right? And then we turned it around and we did it acoustically where you can now hear the words penetrating even more. But the guitar player, Brandon, phenomenal guitar player. Um, um, he, you know, he's young, but he can do almost anything you, you, you ask on a guitar, on a string. He just boom, whatever, you know? And he has an effect pedal that helps him a lot too. So when I encountered him in Belmopan, where he lives, I said, you know, this is nice. And we went to the Gwenlis and we performed for the Gwenlis students. Right. But when I was invited to perform for their assembly and the students, I took Brandon and we performed the song live. And after that, I told him, I said, we're going to go record this in the studio, which we did. So it's on YouTube. Check it out. Again, I played all the instruments surrounding his guitar because I wanted his guitar to stand out. If we would have put a drum in there or put anything in there, it would have shifted away from the emphasis of just the guitar, you know? And the vocals so I love that song and again um, that's one of my favorite songs to me to just sit and meditate to. a lot of my songs are like that it's not songs you get up and whine and dance to it's songs you have to listen to and heed the message I think you are a very conscious Belizean artist no need to even try to explain it because and I think you have already been identified not only in Belize as a very conscious reggae artist but uh, using the word no nonsense artist in your lyrics are consciousness Correct. but also you are known for that for that uh, mark also abroad where you have performed in the united states europe and so on talk about how that consciousness was able how you were able to develop that sense of consciousness that you put in your music today because you don't see a lot of that coming from the young belizean artists of today uh, you can name a few of them on your hands i mean the punta rock genre is not a genre that embeddies yeah. any kind of consciousness or terms of conscious lyrics in right. the case of Ani Palacio and what he what he did right. uh, but it's mostly a sort of a dance music but there is consciousness there and I can say that's the only artist Ani Palacio that I've seen 
embedded a sense of consciousness in that genre. And of course, it's an African culture. And it's, you don't you go. Lose, you know? Talk about how you developed that sense of consciousness, brother. It will start again with the music I grew up with. And I believe that's why the artists of today aren't delivering these messages within the music because they don't grow up with that kind of um, music. You know, like the music they grow up to is that music that they are delivering. I, I encounter these artists everywhere. A day ago, I was in studio in Hollywood and we were recording. But we had an amazing time in the studio. Yet I was recording with artists who um, um, have a song promoting cocaine, you know? And, and it's a big song. And it's, you know, the, the thing is that we have to know our boundaries. And I can't watch any artist and say, you're, you're not for sing that. Because yeah. everybody is inspired by what they're inspired by, whatever it may be. It's usually their surroundings and whatever they also are listening to. Again, my father and my mom were very stern with a certain type of music in the household. And I promote this to each and every one out there. Make sure that your children from a young age are listening to music. That, I mean, from ages zero to eight, again, is a very good time for them to not hear certain music and to hear certain music. After that, even if they hear the other music, this music will have stuck in their brain. And I think that's what happened to me because I've encountered it all. I used to dress like Snoop Dogg at one time. You know, at one time I used to love Snoop Dogg and that whole, and they used to say, bitches and hoes, bitches ain't she but hoes. You know, they used to say some real mad stuff on there. You know, I hope you could bleep that. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. say it like it is, brother. This yeah. is the uh, reality is these like, are legends is an open pocket show, man. Yes, you say like we listen to all this music, but we have to know what to take in from it. We can't we can't think that what we're the scene in Jamaica, because Jamaica sometimes is really way over the edge, especially in the dance hall world. And some of the dancing I've seen them do, you know, like we can't expect to wanna encourage our youths young coming up to. So these are the things, you know, again, music at a young age, you learn your ABCs in the form of a song. I say it on almost every interview I do. That's why I mess up the elemental P part. It's just a song, elemental P. You know, you sing the whole thing, you will never forget it. Just like all the nursery rhymes. Just like all the things you learn in the form of a song. If I say right now, we're gonna chase those crazy ball heads. What do you say? All the time. Because you know, you know, you know you're like, anything I <laughs> yeah. sing in the form of a song, yeah. you've heard it so many times, whether it be over 15 times, which they say is the amount of times the brain takes to mm -hmm. record something. You listen to something 15 times, write something down, your brain never forgets it. This is things that we kind of forget due to the modern world of today. We kind of just sit around with devices and let that do a lot of the work for us but our brains are capable of doing everything these devices are now doing for us you know and these are things that i like to share and again you know the music is just so powerful yeah. and, we, and, we, and we block it out we act like it's not but it really is the music is one of the most powerful things that we learn and will determine your mood in the morning will determine how you sleep at night. Do you put on certain songs? It makes you act a certain way. When you jump in your car, you put on your music and you put it on, how do you feel according to the music you're playing? Is it not true? Very it's very true. true. Very true. So. so the music has a very important role in our life and I think that's why I develop this consciousness because my mom used to have me listening to Peter Tash and so no, also, I mean, I used to be a youth that was very, that's why I believe I was destined to deliver certain messages through my music because uh, I mean who which youth at seven used to sit down and listen to Farrakhan speeches hey. <laughs> I used to do that I don't know why I was so intrigued by his voice and the way he would make a mockery out of certain things that we now you know of today celebrate and you know it's like I just listen to Farrakhan and he been to Belize and I have the recording I had to like I watch him on TV and I put my recorder like I do I was recording stuff you know because that's so I retain so I recording him talk and he was really going off about how much we eat Mennonite chicken in Belize and going off about how the Mennonites are the only one who produce milk. Belize, he said he go everywhere in the Caribbean and he drink in powder milk. Only in Belize we have milk courtesy of the Mennonites. But he put a big thing on it. He, he glorified the Mennonites what they're doing. But you know what the big thing was? 
why are we not doing it ourselves? <laughs> All right, so Farrakhan, there was a serious, serious speech he gave in Belize. I really appreciate him coming to Belize and sharing what he did, you know? Yeah. And bigging up the Big Year movement, which is a part of the reason why I did the song yes, for Farrakhan. You know, big yes, year. This is my brothers. We grew up. We're, we we are all them upon brothers. Big together. up, big year, brother. You know, we we that from school. So now that we are now here and we're making a stand and we see that food is a necessity in life, who doesn't know that we need food? And what can could we decide? So this all is open land. And so now you know we were um, stopped. And I use the word we because I feel like I was a part of it, even though I'm not a big year member. I feel like I'm a part of that, you understand? Because then it's us, it's our people, it's the region. You, you sitting beside a legendary icon yeah. of reggae music, Robert Nesta Mali. Yes, the king of reggae. And, uh, you know, you talk about all the influences that you have had, your parents, who could have better been a, a better role model than Brother David Obi? Right. My father and Mula Hushna. Who yeah. could have better been those two people there? But also, it appears that you have developed your own sense of consciousness after them mm -hmm. that you just spoke about. Because I read books. Minister Louis Farrakhan and the impact he had on you. But how does that brother there that you're sitting beside? How does <laughs> how did he affect you? This brother, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you one thing. You see, again, I retain things, right? Like my brain, for some reason, it never forgets certain things. This brother also said one thing that I never forget. And if you want to search on YouTube, you can just type the last words. Say Bob Marley's last words. You know what he said? He says, everybody have a voice talking inside them. He said, that voice will tell you what is right from wrong. He said, nothing else matter. You can, whatever in the world, that voice that sits inside you is the voice of the Almighty. That's pretty much what he was saying. If you do anything in life, if I pick up this guitar and I string it hard, because I know he might pop the string, anything you do, your voice, there's a voice inside you. That was a powerful thing for me, you know? But besides that, every interview that he has and every song that he wrote and every deliverance that he made, you understand, it's just powers. And I believe he again was divinely empowered you know, yes, through, through, through the music because there's there's not people of, of that nature in this time, you understand? Yes. <laughs> and everything he says is now manifesting in this time and it's still the same time. So I'm wondering how long is this revelation going to last? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, much. because wow, you know, yeah. we are here, I'm happy to be here. Very much, very much. Uh, you, Arsenio, give us a sort of a scoop in terms of the struggle of the youth inside Belize particularly Belize City, Dan Briga, uh, the villages, you know, the youth, especially the black youth, mm -hmm. is struggling. Um, you, you are one of the messengers of that Belizean black youth in struggle in the inner cities of Belize. My know. first album was called Free Up the Nation. You see? <laughs> And we see the, the crisis of gang warfare and so on, just taking our young black lives, Russ. Talk about what Rasinho feels that is the problem and how Rasinho wants, what kind of message Rasinho wants to bring to the world. And that have you have brought that to the world, yeah. to your performances abroad. Talk about that. Well, you know, again, the, the idea of freeing up a nation, that free up me nation, free up me nation, hear the Rasta man a chant for liberation, free up me nation, free up me nation, too long we in a disassociation, free up we nation, free up we nation. A lot of time my pa used to say I always sound vexed when I sing, so I sing calm right now. <laughs> you know when I, free up we nation, free up we nation, me now my pa used to say, well you always sound vexed. Literally, you know, he used to say, you sound vexed, me. I said, but that's so, I'm not happy about the situation. Yes, but, yes. Yeah, so, you know, um, then Sunday come from the heart. And that's all I can say, it's like, the, when I go around the, I don't like to, my, my man now, she don't like when I use the word ghetto, but we are living in a worldwide ghetto, it seems, because you could differentiate it, you know, you could know where is, ah, it is, you know, I was in Santa Cruz the other day and that's what I was explaining, I'm like, I'm in Santa Cruz, California, you know, people are walking their dogs and jogging, 
you know it's a nice environment beautiful but then i have to leave that and come to a place like let's say canton california where you would think it's you hear it but you live in Campton, California, you know, and you will know the real, you know, and then you say, oh, Belize is a nice place. You know, when you're in a place where you have to buy food all the time, you know, like you cannot make food or, you know, and if you have to make food, it's from stuff that's not the best produce. We have the best produce in Belize. I can vouch for that, like 100%. Anywhere I go in the world, we have some of the best produce avocados mangoes people do not have it like what we have it in belize and i love that i appreciate that's why i glorify that you know but that's not the question i just straight up leave it you know the reality of it is that um our ghettos and our society is plagued people say why are you always born fight and, you know the media djs the other day had the nerve to say you know think you burn a lot of fire i mean you are the dj just play me song you know, ask me about what fire i want that's how i felt you know but you know i have to burn this fire because if i don't who will and again as you say there's many artists who are straying and going down the avenue of the frivolousness and you know like i said there's a time and place for everything we can have fun we can drink we can do whatever but it must be a time where we come to our senses and then say, okay, let's move forward now. We can't just be in a chaos all the damn time. You know, you have to find a space and where you focus and move forward. So, I believe though, the system that we burn fire on, that this brother has been burning fire on, all right? Since, you know, it's, 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 it's what is the reason why we are in this situation up, up to today. And these people, Whoever they are, because I really don't know who these. When we say Babylon, we burn Babylon because Babylon is confusion. Babylon is what we know to be Saddam and Gomorrah of the past. And when we look at a place like America and Europe and all that's going on and the chaos and the, I mean, we won't get into the talk of the new pre president and everything would really happen right now. That is plain to see where we're headed. Which is not a good place, yes. you know. Yes. It's like uh, you say, well, what's happening to our world? And I used to say this a long time ago, you know, about ten years ago. This used to be my statement: people are too caught up with the world that they forget about what life. Yes, girl, so precious and divine.